Well, ladies and gentlemen, the captain with an update on our progress. EasyJet is now Britain's biggest airline. Hold on to your hats. Carried 90 million passengers last year. Nice face. Bumpy face. But in 2019... This is going to be challenging, I think. Times have never been tougher for airlines. Fly BMI blames rising fuel costs for its collapse. Staying top dog in these turbulent times... You know, better wet pants than a broken neck. ..means flying more passengers... Please don't get drunk on board an aircraft again. ..on more flights. There's various things we can't predict. Retard, retard. I just broke the wiper. ..to new destinations. Wow. Look at that. Doesn't get much better than this. And that means hiring a new crop of young pilots. We'll just wait for these two ducks. OK, that's clear. We're clear for takeoff. Who could be flying you to 30,000 feet... Minimum. ..sooner than you think. Retard. Over a crucial six months. Relax, 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 relax. Our cameras have been given unique access inside the cockpit. Are you from around here? Bakewell. Where the tarps come, come from? Do they actually? Are you talking to one? <laughs> Following all the highs. God, I can hear everybody clapping. And lows. I need first aid. So buckle up, fold your trays away. <laughs> Retard. And prepare for what could be a bumpy ride. So that was not my finest. More of us are flying than ever before. Two hundred and fifty million extra passengers will take to the skies this year. But with more and more flights, EasyJet will need to recruit another 600 new pilots this year alone. Once qualified, these rookies could start their careers at any one of EasyJet's 30 bases across Europe. Today, 47-year-old Stuart Freeman is at Milan Airport for his first day on the job. I suppose this is the less glamorous side of it, isn't it? In the dark, in the wet. Only two weeks ago, Stuart finished his 18-month training. Excuse me, that's the main call room. And today, he's going to fly paying passengers for the first time. It feels unreal that you're about to be trusted to fly this 50-ton plane for real. Good. OK. Yep, perfect. Now let it start. You see, this thing is working. Take a flight plan. Luckily for the passengers, he won't be alone. In the cockpit with him is no-nonsense Swiss captain Thomas Wenger. And I help you with the frequency. So we're on VHF 2. One to one, that's my 6 two. And safety pilot Julian Lander for added backup. Normally what happens is that all the paper comes to you yes. and, and, and you organise the paper. That's, to your that's your job, okay. exactly. Sounds it's going to be busy. It's busy, it's yeah. busy, it's a busy job. Stuart has four flights today. Captain Thomas will take the first leg to Bari in southern Italy. Then there's a 35-minute flight to Amsterdam and back, which will be Stuart's turn at the controls. Man flex SOS. First day. When you start that first day, it is a, a, quite a nerve-wracking sensation. Cross climb, climb. Check. You don't 100% know what to expect. As Captain Thomas lands in a very rainy barry, yeah. there's a problem. Yeah. Can you check with if your wiper is working? Mine is gone. Rain is forecast for Stuart's first chance behind the controls, so it's probably best that they can see where they're going. Listen, it's India Victor Victor. Yeah, I just broke the wiper. Can you fly without a wiper? I would assume at the moment with the heavy rain, no. So, so it could be... Could be delay. Delay. Every year, 2% or 11,000 of over half a million flights suffer a delay because of technical problems. OK, this is now the minimum equipment list here. So basically it says the aircraft is equipped as well with uh, a rain repellent system. So basically it's a chemical fluid you spray on the, um, on the windshield, and that clears the windshield. 
Believe it or not, there is such a thing as a minimum equipment list, which tells pilots which faulty equipment they can safely fly with. So we use the rain repellent instead of the wiper, huh? The wiper has cost them an extra 20 minutes on the ground, and they've missed their takeoff slot. Nothing that air traffic control can't handle with a good dose of Italian charm. They say now the flight is released. That was pretty straight to the point. <laughs> okay, anyway, we need to wait a new slot uh, at the moment. While Stuart and Captain Thomas are stuck on the tarmac, I just need to find my glasses. 230 miles away at Gatwick Airport. Oh, I'm sorry, these are my grumpy glasses. I'll find some nice ones Do they ones make you later. grumpy? No, they make me look grumpy. Look at this. Nice face. Grumpy face. I disagree. Veteran Captain Emma Henderson and 29-year-old First Officer James Toyne are today flying to one of Emma's favourite destinations, Iceland's capital, Reykjavik. Uh, coming to Cuba for takeoff. Thank you. EasyJet flies half a million people to Keflavik, Iceland's international airport, every year. Due to its closeness to the Arctic Circle, it's also one of the best places in the world to see the northern lights. Hiya. How's it going back there? Good. Have we got lots of holidayers on board today? Oh. Is there a lot of mixture? Yeah. yeah. No stag do, so. No, no stag do to see the But seeing the aurora borealis on your trip is never guaranteed. It's clear enough about seeing it. Yeah, hopefully. Uh, I think it's fast. A mate of mine went a couple of weeks ago and he said they didn't see anything because it was just too stormy. You should get a pretty decent view to hopefully, if it remains as well. Hopefully. I thought I'd see the Northern Lights a lot more than I do, but, you know, they're frustratingly hard to see. So, apart from the Northern Lights, have you ever seen anything else? Uh, yeah, I've had some incredibly low shooting stars, but, like, probably two or 3,000 feet below it. Wow. It was incredible. Like, right there. I've seen lots of planets yeah. sort of going across the sky. Venus, Mercury, Mars, Saturn and Uranus. <laughs> My favourite. Tonight, luck is not on their side and there's no sight of the lights. Cabin crew, thank you. Please prepare the cabin for landing. But on their descent and only 50 miles from the runway... Oh, my goodness, look now. It's an Elmo's fire. Yeah, that's incredible a light show of a different kind. Amazing. St Elmo's fire is a weather phenomenon caused when a sharp object like the nose of the plane passes through an electrical field in the atmosphere, causing static electricity. Ladies and gentlemen, the captain has switched on the fasten seatbelt signs indicating our final descent. While it's an impressive light show for those in the cockpit... At this time, we please ask you to return to your seats and fasten your seatbelts. Thank you. The passengers are completely unaware. 50, 40, 30, 20, retard. I really love it. Things that we see that no one else sees. Cabin crew, that door's clear to open. Lovely. It never becomes boring, it's always interesting. Every day, EasyJet carries 200,000 passengers. But with more demand and airports full to bursting, EasyJet needs bigger planes. Seven metres longer than the current Airbus, and with a whopping 49 extra seats, the new Airbus A321 could help EasyJet carry two million more passengers a year. When you were going around outside, it's, it is noticeably longer, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. At Gatwick, the team flying the new aircraft today are 26-year-old senior First Officer Jenny Herbert and seasoned Captain Simon Mattier. 
but I think everybody loves this aeroplane. It's, it's nice, it's big, it's stable. I was told it's really difficult to do a bad landing in it, and I oh, said, well, I might don't testify jinx us. to that. <laughs> don't you jinx us. Right, have a look at what you have in front of you. Does that all make sense? Yeah. Are you happy with that? Yeah. Despite having 3,500 flying hours under her belt, this will be the first time Jenny will have flown the A321. First, she'll observe Captain Simon on the outward leg to Rome, and then she'll fly back herself. Aircraft, well, that's why we're here, so it's 321. Yeah. Defects, nothing being carried, there's nothing on here. Yeah, I think we're ready. Ground to see four or five kilo hotel, quite some push and start. But with everyone seated and ready for their Italian adventure, Hello, Simon. That's okay. Okay, do, so do we need um, emergency services? Okay. Uh -huh. So we've got a child traveling in a school party, got a nosebleed that won't stop. We're gonna have to go back on stand. I knew you would be trouble. My captain, well, apologies, we're not going anywhere just yet. It's back to the stand. This 90 million pound new jet may be the ultimate flying machine, but today it's been grounded by an Italian teenager's nosebleed. My only concern now is if we sit with the APU running for too long, we will need more fuel. The APU is the power unit that runs the air conditioning on the plane. If they keep it running, Jenny and Simon risk adding a refueling delay to their problems. How do you feel about turning the AP off for a moment? You're such a genius. <laughs> Definitely going to have to blacklist you. <laughs> right. Well, I've been very lucky, to be fair. Have you? Yeah. So it's all going to happen today, then? If you taxi, some people want to see you. Can you help them that they see you? Um, some lights? Yes. Which one you want? Taxi. In Bari, Italy, after 40 minutes waiting for a slot, Stuart finally takes the controls for the very first time. Then whenever you're ready, you have control. I have control. With 150 paying passengers on board and a broken wiper. OK. Whatever you are. Take off. Here we are. Here. After a grade A takeoff, Captain Thomas is letting Stuart attempt his first landing with passengers at Amsterdam. Uh, am I OK to plug things in here? Always. He'll be one of a thousand pilots landing on Amsterdam's six runways today. But this afternoon, the huge airport is covered in cloud. Not the easiest prospect for a rookie pilot attempting his first landing on the job. And word of his big day has spread to the cabin. It's the first one? Yeah. Oh my god, you've got to be kidding me, really? Okay. <coughs> I think he's, he's going very good. It's a comfortable. <laughs> Once you see the runway, if you have doubts, uh, any doubts, go around. No, you say you have control. Okay, okay. I'm here for this. Huh? This is my job. Okay. okay. This afternoon, the cloud is so low, Stuart will only see the runway 30 seconds before he lands, giving him just moments to adjust the plane's direction for the runway. One thousand. Check. It's a very intense experience. You're flying this 60-ton jet at 150 miles an hour or so towards the ground, and things do happen very quickly. 500. Check. Check. Visual. Visual. That is the point where it does feel very real, and you know that you're not in, uh, in a video game. 100 above. Minimum. 
The nose is too high. 50, 40. If he doesn't correct it, Stuart and his 150 passengers could come down very hard. 30, 20, retard, retard. At Amsterdam Airport. 50. 40, 30. New pilot Stuart Freeman is attempting to safely land his 150 passengers. 20, retard, retard. But he's misjudged the angle of the plane. 10, 10. Good eye of control. Priority left. Retard, retard. With seconds to spare, Captain Thomas has taken control to execute a safe landing. It's not the start Stuart would have wanted, but passenger safety comes first. Tired? Yes, that was hard work. <laughs> Let's debrief this quick. At 200 feet, we fly towards? Uh, the aiming point. Did you fly to the aiming point? I can't remember. You drifted high, then came yeah. high of control. Huh? Yes. Because then we stopped to fly the aircraft, and, because and the that, aircraft started drifted. to drift yes. off. Stuart has at least 50 more flights with a training captain, so he's got time to perfect his landing. Uh, the very last bit of the landing wasn't quite right, um, so Thomas took over on the last sort of 20 foot or so. We're tired now, it's been a fairly intense day. <laughs> Easy 4-5 Kilo Hotel. Still stuck at Gatwick, First Officer Jenny Herbert is meant to be flying EasyJet's new extra-long plane for the first time. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the captain here. I'm very sorry we've had to return to the stand, so two passengers will leave us. A poorly Italian student and his teacher have had to disembark. DHL Gatwick golf uniforms are my counter. But they still can't leave. We need uh, two bags offloaded. Any idea when the loaders are going to arrive? Both passengers had bags on the plane, and the flight can't take off with them in the hold. It all depends on how quickly the ground handlers can get to us to get their bags out of their hold. So at the moment, we're unsure of the delay, but hopefully it won't be too much longer. They've been stuck on the tarmac for 30 minutes, and with the air conditioning turned off, it's now getting uncomfortably hot. OK, I'll stick it on. <laughs> a passenger is starting to panic in the cabin, so Jenny ventures out. Are you a bit nervous? It's OK. <laughs> it's very safe. Until they get the bags removed, nobody's going to be saying Arrivederci to Gatwick. 200 miles north is John Lennon Airport in Liverpool. It's an important base for trainees who want to become fully-fledged pilots. Cool. Welcome, everyone, to your base training. How are you feeling? Excited? These cadets are at the final stage of their course and soon will be flying a passenger jet for the very first time. It's a big day for you, I realise that, but it's an absolute privilege to be with you and sharing this first day. After 18 months learning to fly in light aircraft and in the flight simulator, today they'll be tested on their takeoff and landing skills. So, Steph, you and me? Yes, it is. Excellent. This is it. This is your day to enjoy a little bit. Amongst the trainees is 31 year old Steph Byrne. You're allowed to smile, you know, Steph. It's meant to be fun. The only passengers today will be her fellow cadets, and watching every move in the cockpit is training captain Rob Baltrop. Thanks, left hand circuit clear, take off 270s. All right, and are you happy? Yeah. Let's get it in. I grew up in Gateshead. It was my mum my and my sister and me. Me and my sister were told we could do anything we wanted to do as long as we worked and paid for it. Ready? I certainly am. Take are off. you? Yeah. <laughs> I used to work my absolute socks off just, just to pay for 20 minutes in an airplane. Although you only need five GCSEs to become a pilot, you will definitely need up to £120,000 to pay for it, and the selection process can be tough. 
my debt in total probably is more than £70,000, I imagine. It's a lot of money. <laughs> So start your descent now. Remember, you've got to anticipate that three degrees. So don't drift. See so yeah, how we're just a little bit less than three degrees? Yeah. Reset three degrees. Reset three. Keep coming down. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. 40, 30, Left. Now. 20. Retard. Retard. Relax, 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 relax. Relax, relax, relax. OK, I have control. You have control. The nose of the plane is too high. Retard. Captain Rob takes over and brings the aircraft into a climb to stop the tail hitting the runway. Here up? Yeah. Up. Oh. Okay. Gonna snag 170. You okay? Yeah. We'll get there, mate. We'll get there. Don't be disheartened. Not a problem. Don't let it annoy you. You're thinking about it too much. If Steph fails the final stage of the training, it will mean going back to the flight simulator. At Gatwick... Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon to all. A very warm welcome on board this is Jet Flight. Captain Emma is back on her favourite route to Iceland. This time with First Officer Benjamin Collins. Where did you meet your girlfriend? While I was training. Oh, OK. It's better. So, um, absolutely, completely off the record. Is she a keeper? Are you going to marry her? Or are you not going to answer me? <laughs> <laughs> right, it's been here. There's Steve, just checking how you are. Saved by a call from the cabin. Just to make you aware, we have one gentleman who's a little bit too much to drink. Um, the passengers next to him said they're just, he's a little bit over-friendly. Sounds like Emma's not the only one getting to know the person next to her. OK. OK, then. Oh, I thought okay. I'd just let you know in case anything uh, blows up. Fantastic. Thanks. All right, OK. See you right. Cheers, mate. What's the story? Um, Your radio. a passenger that's had a bit too much to drink, so they stopped serving him. He just wanted to let us know in case it escalated any further. What did he say? The passengers around him and said he's friendly, is uh, he? just overly friendly. OK. Whilst many enjoy an in-flight tipple... Cabin crew, thank you. Prepare the cabin for landing, please. Being drunk on a flight is a criminal offence. Spoilers. Reverse screen. And it's something captains like Emma will not tolerate. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 Thank you. So you've been... you've been... had a bit of trouble, have you? We just calmed down. He's frightened of flight. Is... OK. Too much to drink. Sorry that you had to put up with that, and thank you for dealing with it so well. Excuse me, sir, can I just stop you for a moment? Can I just let you know, um, it is actually an offence to be drunk on board an aircraft, so oh, no, yeah, we've yeah. we've been quite lenient with you now, but okay. if you drink that much when you fly back, you I, risk... I, I think I've been all right, though, haven't I? Well, it's just the amount of alcohol you've had to drink. It's just, um, I'm glad you've had a good time, and I'm only well, letting you know... We don't need to hug, but you can... I, I know you're a captain, that can help. We can hug. OK, <laughs> go and have a good time, I but please don't it. get drunk on board an aircraft again. But behave yourself. Always so much more than flying the plane. Feels nice, isn't it? Yeah, amazing. Cadet Steph Byrne is flying above Liverpool on the final stage of her flight training. Are you happy, Steph? Yeah. You should be happy. I just annoyed myself. Don't worry. She's now completed six okay. landings, but only three were good enough. So start your descent now. Remember, you've got to anticipate that three degrees. So wings level now. Get yourself on the sense line. 50, 40, 30, 20. Retard. Retard. Better. Better? Brilliant, Steph. Yeah. That's more like what I would expect. On her seventh attempt, Steph finally makes it through. Well done. Congratulations. That Thank was you. brilliant. That was really, really good. Everything's good. I'm happy. You happy? Yeah. Brilliant. Then we're done. Congratulations. Her next flight will be with paying passengers, where she'll have to get it right first time.
At Gatwick Airport, it's meant to be First Officer Jenny's first flight in the A321 with Captain Simon, but they haven't even left the tarmac. Oh, I'm just having a lovely evening. A sick passenger has left the plane and they're now an hour behind schedule. Right. Excuse me. Captain Simon decides it's time to break out the emergency rations. Open the Percy pigs. <laughs> you, need, you need the sugar boost. <laughs> right. Where's my... There's Percy pigs in the flight deck if you need some sugar. Right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, very good evening. The good news is we've found the two bags. I'm trying to sort out a tug, which we need to push the aircraft back again. When we find this tug, we'll be on our way. The £90 million A321 is crammed with state-of-the-art technology, but like all aircraft, there's one thing it can't do, reverse. Unless Captain Simon and First Officer Jenny get the help of a tug, no bigger than a farmyard tractor, flight EZY 8257 won't be going anywhere. Hello there, Simon Matcher on Mike Alpha at Gatwick. How are you? <laughs> I need to get the kettle on, I'm parched. You've got all your paperwork, haven't you? 30 minutes later and finally the tug arrives. Let's do the before start checklist. Now that it's kind of calming down. Well, I've got a perfect pedal. <laughs> yeah, in fact, I think you should do it with three. <laughs> See if we can get further this time. <laughs> yeah, get past starting <laughs> just one. Checked. Start set. Ninety minutes after they last set off for the runway, they're finally taking off for Rome. Safely in the air, at last everyone can relax. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the captain with an update on our progress. Well, for those of you on the left hand side, before I continue, it's worth pointing out we have a lovely view of Paris. And if you look directly beneath us, you can even see the Eiffel Tower that's uh, very clear tonight. And here we are, sat, just becoming stable now. Check. With Rome in their sight, Captain Simon demonstrates how to land the longer plane. It's just trying to keep that scan going as usual and just making small, tiny movements to correct for it. EZY 8257 finally touches down in Rome, 90 minutes behind schedule. Last. Apologies, we were behind the schedule. While the passengers can get home to their warm beds, for Captain Simon, it's a different matter. I'm, I won't phone her, I'll just send her a message. Otherwise, she'll lock me out of the house. <laughs> for the crew, there's 50 more passengers than usual to disembark. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. See ya. Thank you, bye-bye. OK, thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye now. Thank you. I can't do 235 bye-byes. That's a, that's a lot of people to say goodbye to. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Take care. Thank you. Good night. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Bye-bye. 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 Thank you. Good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Cool. All right, let's do it. Captain Simon and First Officer Jenny are in Rome, preparing to head back to Gatwick after an eventful outbound flight made them rather delayed. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, very good evening. Captain speaking. My name's Simon Matchett. Uh, we're running, what, about an hour and a half late. Um, at Gatwick, we had a very sick passenger uh, bleeding rather profusely. There we do. Yeah. Right, so, uh, your turn. <laughs> Unbeknownst to the passengers, this is 26-year-old Jenny's first time at the controls of the A321. No tams, um, a few taxiways closed. Um, yes. They're not going to affect us on the way out. The aircraft, 321, nothing wrong with it yet. <laughs> Jenny will need to take the plane's extra-long body into account when taking off, 
to make sure she doesn't hit the tail on the runway. A bit sluggish to get off the ground, keep it coming at through 10 degrees, you'll have to reduce some of the pressure. There we go. Positive climb. Whilst Jenny concentrates on launching the 45-metre plane into the air, in the cabin, the passengers are still in holiday mode. We've been to Rome. It was my 21st birthday when we were there. Us two went for a romantic getaway, and this guy third wheel. Tag along. <laughs> Literally. Third wheel. <laughs> no friends, no plans. I thought Rome might as well. <laughs> Would you like anything? I'm going to get coffee. Yeah, I'd have a cup of tea. Yeah, please. OK. Yeah. The A321 cockpit has over 900 controls monitoring every aspect of the aircraft. Interesting, she popped up. Yeah, what have we got? But one of these is flashing red. So we've got a flight control flap system. That doesn't sound good. Let me see if I can find anything in here. So flight control flap. System one fold. All planes have control flaps. Yes, that's the technical term. They're used to help slow down the plane when coming into land, so quite useful. Uh, now, if the other one fails, then it ends up becoming significantly more exciting. Uh-huh. Because <laughs> then we're doing a flapless landing. Yeah. I'm sure it won't come to that. <laughs> so usually I would say no, but after today, I'm not too sure. Yeah. A thousand miles northwest, Cadet Steph Byrne is in Manchester preparing for her first flight with passengers. I'm really excited for today. This feels like it's been a long time coming. This is a great feeling. Do you want seven ton fuel or seven point one? Seven would be absolutely fine, thank you. She's in the cockpit with training captain Simon White. Please, can you tell me the trip fuel? What's that? Please, can you tell me the trip fuel? Oh, field? sorry. Yeah, of course, can. But it's Steph who will be taking off and landing the plane today. You happy, uh, Steph? You all right? Um, we yes, can always as, slow it down. Don't worry. As can be. I think today is just hold on to your hats and just get through it. Trainees must complete their first 12 flights with a safety pilot sitting behind them to step in if something should go wrong. Bound for Paris, today's passengers are feeling the magic. We're going to Disneyland. Ready? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Right, take off. After her struggles during the training flights, Steph's hoping she can deliver a fairy tale ride. Captain Emma Henderson is back in Iceland. Trying to work out how to turn the first officer's torch on at the moment. <laughs> Yay! We have it. She's preparing for a nighttime flight back to Gatwick. Ladies and gentlemen, very good evening to you all. A very warm welcome on board this East Jet flight. My name is Emma Henderson. It's my pleasure to be your captain on board the flight this evening. And my lovely colleague, Ben, has the pleasure of flying you back to Gatwick with a flight time of three hours. So far on her Iceland trips, Emma's seen St Elmo's fire and a drunken passenger, but still no northern lights. Oh, there's one more thing to mention, which is that um, the northern lights um, are forecast to be quite strong tonight. Enjoy the flight and uh, speak to you soon. Back on one, cabin is secure for takeoff. No changes. Perfect. Positive climb. 6,000 projector. Checked. So I've been very, very good and having some salad. 
I'm just becoming aware that as I get older, it's not getting any easier to stay fit and healthy. While the flight crew relax into their journey... Because well, I love bounties. That's my favourite chocolate in the crew food. They're always left over as well, aren't they? Mm. In the cabin, the passengers are poised for what promises to be a once-in-a-lifetime experience. I came to Iceland just to see the Northern Lights. And then when we get into the plane, the girl was like, you might see them on the plane. So it's very exciting. But honestly, we've been hunting for a couple of days and it was really hard to see it. It's something so magical and mystical about it. It's, it's just like pure magic, to be honest. <laughs> and no one really understands why they are happening. <laughs> what do you think our chances are then? 50-50. 30 minutes into the journey, however, and there's nothing but darkness outside. But then... There it is, I think. In fact, it definitely is. Absolutely, definitely. Oh, wow. Definitely there. Oh, my God, it's amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Captain speaking. If you look to the left-hand side of the airport, there is a streak of quite bright green just uh, showing on the left-hand side of the event, so I hope you enjoy that. You're welcome. We're very lucky to see this because, I mean, you do get it sometimes, but we're very lucky to see it quite like this. That is pretty impressive. You can see them. And I thought I would, like, make it come true maybe when I was older. So being able to see it at 22, that's, like, the, I think the best way to close it. Lucky us. 50, 40, 30, 20. Retard, retard. Ground spoilers, reverse green, diesel, bada boom, lovely job. Did you enjoy it? It was a beautiful shape. It was a massive was tree, magical. and if I never see it again in my life, I'm literally so happy, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Lovely okay. to meet you. And you, take, take care, bye. I think some people would say it's always an experience, they'll never forget flying with me. That's <laughs> Speed check, flaps, three. 180 miles away, 31 year old rookie pilot Steph Byrne. Flaps four. Speed check, flaps four. And the checklist. Is on the return leg of a flight to Paris. She's moments away from touching down in Manchester. Cabin. Secure for landing. Water thrust. Speed. In her final assessment, she struggled and had to make several attempts to nail a good landing. Obviously can't see a runway yet. Be coming in very shortly. Today, with paying passengers on board, she'll have to get it right first time. If the landing's not quite perfect, I instantly beat myself up because I want to be great at this job. Here we go. Happy if I'm on your control? Yeah, of course. OK, I have control. Concentrate, you see, you could get that uh, nose down onto oh. the flight director. Minimum. So you've got your aiming point, yeah. so just minor corrections now. Coming down. 50, 40, 30, now. 20, retard, retard. Good. Spoilers. Scorers, reverse green, Lisa. There you go. Well done. Steph executes a near perfect touchdown. Well done, Steph. Much to the relief of her passengers. Oh, God, I can hear everybody clapping. This is a cool job. You know, you're flying a, a metal tin can through the air at 300 miles an hour. You don't get a cooler job than that. I just love it. Congratulations. Thank you, and thank you for coming along. It's been really, really tough. <laughs> She's done really well, hasn't she? Yeah. Was it all right at the back as it well? Was. It was. It was great. <laughs> I love that. Well I can done. like sigh of relief now. <laughs> <laughs> Steph may be on the ground, but Captain Simon and First Officer Jenny are on their way back to Gatwick, flying over France, and a warning light has started flashing. The flaps, which slow the plane down when coming into land, may not be working on one wing. On previous currents, um, eight legs ago, 
It's highly unusual, and they suspect that the warning is a false alarm, but they won't find out for sure until they actually come in to land. So we will come in nose high. In a scenario that's not ideal in a 321. As pilots, we always plan for the worst and aim for the best, so we're the ultimate pessimist. So with that, you are always thinking about the what if. And you can have months or even years without anything happening, and then it all comes at once. Two, both flat channels fault. So it's not a good day. First Officer Jenny and Captain Simon are mid-flight from Rome to Gatwick. It's the first time Jenny's flown this longer plane, and they don't know if one wing flap is working. Obviously, the weather is rubbish and it craps out. And you're at minimum <laughs> and your nose high. Then, yeah. um... But it won't be doing that. So they need to perform a manual landing, and for that they need good visibility. But Gatwick's too cloudy, so Jenny and Simon need to find a backup airport. Stan says overcast 300, Cardiff broken at 100, so won't be going there. <laughs> Unfortunately, low cloud is blanketing much of the UK. Nice is nice. Leon is nice. The alternative airports are miles away from Gatwick, but Jenny and Simon are not going to worry the passengers just yet. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls from the flight deck, your first officer, Jenny Herbert, will pick up date for you. Making your progress now, we're currently cruising at 36,000 feet, which is just under 11 kilometres high. Should be landing in approximately an hour and a half. What's the best one there then? Birmingham. Uh, Birmingham. So the advantage with that, though, is it does keep us in the UK. Yeah. And we can coach everybody. Yeah. But with only 30 minutes to landing, Hello. It's going on here, but something else printing out now as well. Jenny and Simon get a weather update from EasyJet Control Centre. Oh, there we go. It's broken at six now. It's all right. It's glorious. It's good news. The clouds have lifted just in time for Jenny to make a manual landing at Gatwick. 6,000 metres rain, broken 600. So we should you know, see it nice and early with 600, so yeah. it's fine. But until she's in the middle of her descent, Jenny won't know for sure if that wing flap is working. It will take flap too nice and early. We'll almost expect it, so then if it comes, um, we just know that we just need to figure a little bit earlier with it. Yep. It's not a problem. Pilots are trained to land planes, even if a wing flap isn't working. Slightly late to reboot. Checked. No, I Cabin, please prepare the cabin for the landing. Shame it's so dark. Yeah. One thousand. Let's go flaps in two. So, see if they work. It's the moment of truth. It's a very dynamic situation. You never know what's going to happen. And there are a lot of people's lives in your hands, and actually, that's a huge responsibility. Moment, wasn't it? Okay, so they are moving. That's fine. 500. Checked. The flaps may be working okay, but she still has to land the longer plane for the first time and in lashing rain. If you're not happy about anything, do call it out, yeah? Yeah. Okay, so should we go gear down? Yeah. 100 above. Trying to keep that scan going. Minimum. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Retard. Retard. <laughs> Thank you. 
Jenny's had sick passengers, long delays, bad weather, and a faulty warning light to deal with. Despite all of that, she pulls off a textbook landing. Cool. How was that? Yeah, good. It's been a difficult day with the A321, but there are no hard feelings. Thank you, bye bye. Thank you, bye bye. Thank you, bye bye. Thank you, bye bye. Thank you, Thank you. Good night. It's really nice to fly. It's much more stable than the other aircraft, so it's, it's really nice. It's really good. Very well done. Followed, bye bye. Take followed care. instruction well. Good night. Bye. So bye bye. We get to do it again tomorrow. Next time. Wow. Did you see that? That was massive, like straight ahead of us. Female passenger. She's feeling faint. Um, she's thrown up. She doesn't look quite right to me. It's windy, isn't it? We've got some big problems. This is going to be challenging. 40, 30, 20. Spoilers. I'm just glad they're alive. <laughs> Love, love, love that show. Don't miss the final one of the series next Thursday evening at 9. It's a bold series of scientific experiments to delve deep into the way children experience life across Britain and the world today. It's new, it's called Planet Child, and you can see it on ITV Hub.